friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa String Works Workshop. It is Thursday, April 14th, I believe. Well, I guess we um, dodged a bullet yesterday with the storms going around us. They apparently went right around the farm. <laughs> we ain't getting nothing here. I mean, well, we got rain and we could hear a little thunder and lightning and stuff, but it wasn't much. So thank you for your prayers. I guess it worked. Yeah. I've often said that this farm kind of seems to have its own weather. I, there, a lot of the big storms do go around us. Every once in a while we get nailed, but for the most part it seems to kind of go around us. Kind of okay with that. <laughs> anyway, uh, we did dodge the bullets, so that's good. Yesterday on the uh, mandolin, I got a little further. I. Uh, did clean up that binding area and got that looking pretty nice. It's not perfect yet, but it's much nicer. I touched up some of the finish area there uh, where, you know, like when you're cleaning that up, you always scratch it and stuff. And So I'm going to have to set this aside though for a while because I got too many other things. And so what are the other things? Well, here's one of them. This is a mandolin that came back. Yeah, I had to I didn't do it well enough the first time. Uh, this is that uh, Sam Bush mandolin that I put the new truss rod in and tried to straighten out that crooked neck. Man, that thing had an underbow like crazy. And in my opinion, it's pretty good. Now, um, I think the customer was correct in sending this back. I don't want anybody to misunderstand what I'm about to say, because it's gonna sound like I'm talking out of both sides of my mouth. And to some degree I am, but you know, I'm aware of that. You don't have to point it out. The point is, you know, it had a slight underbow in it and I called attention to that in the last video of this series on this mandolin when I did all that work and you may recall that. And by calling attention to it then, you know, that's, I, I already know anytime you do that, that's what the customer focuses on, you know. It really wasn't bad. I, me personally, I could have played it forever that way. It wouldn't have bothered me at all. But I've already told you many times how picky musicians are, and especially good musicians. And so he wanted it fixed better. So I said, send it back. You'll pay the shipping. I'll do the work, no, no charge at all. So when I got it back here, I measured it. And um, to my best measurement, it was about 10 thousandths of an inch from right here to here, you know, under bow. Now, that may sound like a lot, but it's the thickness of three sheets of this paper. This paper's three thousandths of an inch thick. So three of these tightly together in the middle, that's how much gap there was. That may sound like a lot, but on a guitar, you would absolutely not even be able to see that with your eye. I could because that's what I'm used to doing, but, with, but the average person isn't even going to be able to see that. But on a mandolin, because it's much shorter, you can see it, and I could see it. But now I do have it absolutely flat. I just want to set the record straight. I've already done the work, and I told him I would do it totally for free. Well, the ball game changed about halfway through. He wanted me to put bigger frets in it. Well, that's a lot more work. Uh, you know, you, you may think, oh, well, there's no more work putting them in than putting the original ones in. Well, I, if I had, could have used the original ones, they came out so perfectly, I could have just stuck them right back in. They were brand new. They didn't have enough wear on them to matter. So I could have put them right back in. It would have saved me a lot of time and effort. So making the new bigger frets, first of all, is more work. Not a ton more work, but it is because I had to nip off the ends. The other ones were already set for this binding and everything. On these, I have to do a lot more work. And then uh, they're bigger, so they're even harder to uh, level the ends and make the ends smooth and nice where the little frets were already done. But the bigger problem is, is now it's the setup. Because now these are much bigger frets, now I'm going to probably have to make a new nut and, and, you know, and deal with all the setup issues. So for me, personally, it's a lot more work. So the way I do it is if you keep everything the same, you know, and, I, and I'm just fixing what I didn't do right the first time, then I don't charge for it. But if you start modifying stuff, I have to draw the line somewhere because it creates additional labor effort for me. I like to treat my customers as good as I can treat them. I really do. I try to bend over backwards to do everything for them. 
but I also feel that has to be reciprocal. They have to treat me right, and so it, at some point I have to say, well, I have to do charge for that part. So I didn't start the clock until I had everything perfectly level, straight, flat, perfect. I started the clock when I started putting these big frets back in, and uh, and you know, I'll start it again when I start doing the actual setup work on this because it is going to be considerably more work now. Otherwise, it's uh, up in pretty good shape. He took it to some place locally, and they didn't want to mess with it apparently. Uh, I can look down it now and it looks as flat as a pancake so it should stay that way the truss rods really tight the truss rod should keep the flatness that part sh I don't think is the issue it was just this whole thing was just out of kilter and that's the best way I can explain it it was out of kilter what I probably should have done in hindsight is probably should have cut down this, uh, this piece that's under here, uh, this extension. I should have cut that down a little flatter when I had the fretboard off of it uh, because it did ski ramp up and that's where most of the underbow came from quite honestly. So what I did was I took the frets out and I just leveled through it. I mean when you're talking ten thousandths of an inch that's the smart way to do it. Not take it all apart and redo everything. That would be stupid really. Anyway, that's all I did was I just leveled through it. Like I said, it's as, it's as flat as they come now. I, you know, I put all the straight edges and the measuring tools and everything. And first of all, you can't see any light under it when you hold a straight edge on it. So all of that matters. All that to say is this was just another project I had to get done. It's been sitting in here for a couple of weeks now. I should have got to it sooner, but yeah, it's yeah, I don't have to tell you. I, there's just so many things going on and uh, I'm working shorter hours because of the hands nowadays. It just took this long to get to it. But I hopefully will finish this up yet today and get this on its way back to the customer. I'm hoping I don't have to make a new nut. I'm pretty sure I will because whenever you raise the frets up that much, especially on a little mandolin, it's more than likely you're going to have to make a new nut. So that's where all the time comes, is making that nut. Boy, that's not easy. Everybody says, just replace the nut. No, not me. I, I say don't replace the nut unless you absolutely have to replace the nut. And if you do, go for it. Okay, well, that's about all I've got for you today. I just wanted to give you a short video here so I can get back to work. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully uh, you understand where I'm at on this and where I'm coming from. Give us a thumbs up if you would, and we'll see you tomorrow.